When preparing for data collection, why is it important to have all materials such as paper, pen, clipboard, timer, and data collection sheet ready beforehand? A. To ensure that data is collected accurately and efficiently. B. To follow the RBT's personal organizational habits. C. To impress the supervising BCBA. D. To reduce the need for electronic data collection methods. Answer A. To ensure that data is collected accurately and efficiently. What is the purpose of filling out identifying information on a data collection sheet? A. To create extra work for the RBT. B. To take up space on the data sheet. C. To practice handwriting. D. To provide necessary details for future reference and analysis. Answer D. To provide necessary details for future reference and analysis. What is continuous measurement in the context of observing behavior? A. Selectively recording behaviors that seem important. B. Measuring only the first and last instance of behavior. C. Recording each and every instance of behavior within the observation period. D. Using a stopwatch to record the duration of each behavior. Answer. C. Recording each and every instance of behavior within the observation period. When is duration recording most appropriate to use? A. For behaviors that are frequent and short-lived. B. For behaviors that occur at a constant rate. C. For behaviors that last for a significant amount of time. D. For behaviors that are easy to count. If John hits other students five times in 30 minutes, how would you report this using continuous measurement terms? A. John's frequency of hitting is 5. B. John's rate of hitting is 10 times per hour. C. John's duration of hitting is 30 minutes. D. John's intensity of hitting is 5. Answer. B. John's rate of hitting is 10 times per hour. Which type of continuous measurement would be most appropriate for recording the behavior of hand flapping? A. Frequency. B. Rate. C. Duration. D. Interval recording. Answer. B. Rate. What does inter-response time, IRT, measure in continuous measurement procedures? A. The time it takes for a behavior to occur after a prompt. B. The duration of the behavior itself. C. The frequency of the behavior in a given time period. D. The time between consecutive instances of a behavior. Answer. D. The time between consecutive instances of a behavior. What is the appropriate use of latency recording? A. When the behavior occurs at a high rate. B. When there is a concern about the delay between the prompt and the behavior. C. When the behavior has a long duration. D. When the behavior is discrete and isolated. Answer. B. When there is a concern about the delay between the prompt and the behavior. If an RBT wants to record the time lapse between a student answering math problems, they would use A. Frequency measurement B. Duration recording C. IRT measurement D. Latency recording Answer. C. IRT measurement How are intervals marked in partial interval recording? A plus if the target behavior occurred at any time during the interval. B. Dash if the target behavior occurred throughout the entire interval. C. Plus if the target behavior did not occur at all during the interval. D. Dash if the target behavior occurred at any time during the interval. Answer. A. Plus if the target behavior occurred at any time during the interval. Which statement is true about partial interval recording? A. It provides an exact count of the number of times a behavior occurs. B. It underestimates the occurrence of behavior. C. It may overestimate the occurrence of behavior. D. 
D, it is more valid than continuous measurement procedures. Answer, C, it may overestimate the occurrence of behavior. For which type of behavior is partial interval recording most appropriate? A, behaviors with a long duration. B, behaviors that occur at a low frequency. C, behaviors that are high intensity and short duration. D, behaviors that are discrete and occur infrequently. Answer, C, behaviors that are high intensity and short duration. When marking intervals in partial interval recording, what does a minus signify? A, the behavior was present but not throughout the entire interval. B, the behavior was present throughout the entire interval. C, the interval was not observed. D, the behavior was absent during the entire interval. Answer, D, the behavior was absent during the entire interval. When using whole interval recording, what does it mean when an interval is marked with a plus? A. The target behavior occurred intermittently during the interval. B. The target behavior occurred throughout the entire interval without stopping. C. The target behavior did not occur at all during the interval. D. The target behavior started at the end of the interval. Answer, B, the target behavior occurred throughout the entire interval without stopping. What is one characteristic of momentary time sampling? A, it requires the behavior to occur for the whole interval to be recorded. B, it can be used simultaneously for multiple clients. C, it provides a continuous record of behavior throughout the interval. D. It overestimates the occurrence of behavior. Answer, B. It can be used simultaneously for multiple clients. Which of the following best describes whole interval recording? A. It tends to underestimate the occurrence of behavior. B. It overestimates the occurrence of behavior. C. It is the most accurate method of behavior recording. D. It is recommended for behaviors with a very short duration. Answer A. It tends to underestimate the occurrence of behavior. What type of behavior is best suited for whole interval recording? A. Behaviors with variable durations. B. Behaviors that are continuous and sustained. C. High intensity, short duration behaviors. D. Behaviors that are important to record in their entirety but occur infrequently. Answer B. Behaviors that are continuous and sustained. What is permanent product recording primarily used to measure? A. The outcomes or results of a behavior. B. The quality of a behavior while it is occurring. C. The frequency of a behavior during an observation period. D. The duration of a single instance of behavior. Answer A. The outcomes or results of a behavior. Which of the following is an advantage of permanent product recording? A. It allows for real-time observation of behavior. B. It requires the presence of the person performing the behavior. C. It provides a physical record that can be reviewed at a later time. D. It eliminates the possibility of the behavior being influenced by an observer. Answer. C. It provides a physical record that can be reviewed at a later time. Which of the following would not be appropriate for permanent product recording? A. Counting the number of spelling errors in a written essay. B. Measuring the volume of water poured during a task. C. Tallying the number of completed sales calls from a phone log. D. Observing and recording the facial expressions of a child during play. Answer. D. Observing and recording the facial expressions of a child during play. Permanent product recording can be flawed if A. The product is not directly created by the target behavior. B. The behavior occurs too frequently to record. C. The behavior produces different results each time. 
d. The observer records during every instance of the behavior. Answer A. The product is not directly created by the target behavior. Which of the following best describes the method of recording the occurrence or non-occurrence of a behavior during the entire interval? A. Partial interval recording. B. Whole interval recording. C. Momentary time sampling. D. Rate recording. Answer B. Whole interval recording. If an RBT is instructed to graph the average latency of a client's response to a given prompt over a week, which axis would represent the sessions or days? A. Horizontal axis. B. Vertical axis. C. Both A and B. D. Neither A nor B. Answer A. Horizontal axis. NRBT notes that a client has completed 4 of 10 math problems within a session. What type of measurement procedure does this represent? A. Duration B. Rate C. Permanent product D. Frequency Answer C. Permanent product Sally is recording a client's behavior. She starts the stopwatch when the client begins screaming and stops the stopwatch when the client stops screaming. What type of measurement procedure is she using? A. Rate recording. B. Frequency count. C. Duration recording. D. Interval recording. Answer. C. Duration recording. Paul wants a quick and easy way to record five different students' task engagement. What type of measurement procedure should he use? A. Partial interval recording. B. Whole interval recording. C. Momentary time sampling. D. Permanent product recording. Answer. C. Momentary time sampling. Tony reported his data collection as a percentage of intervals with occurrence. What type of data collection is he using? A. Frequency recording. B. Interval recording. C. Time sampling. D. Permanent product. Answer. B. Interval recording. A client of Mary's takes a very long time to start getting dressed after instruction. What type of data collection would be appropriate? A. Duration recording. B. Latency recording. C. Frequency count. D. Rate recording. Answer. B. Latency recording. Tom does not have a lot of time to collect data on a client's social engagement during play. What type of measurement should he use? A. Permanent product recording. B. Momentary time sampling. C. Whole interval recording. D. Partial interval recording. Answer. B. Momentary time sampling. Harry wants to record how many times his client hits. He should use A, count and report the data as A, duration, mean duration. B, frequency, total count. C, frequency, rate. D, interval, percentage. Answer, C, frequency, rate. An interval recording procedure that overestimates behavior is A. Momentary time sampling B. Partial interval recording C. Whole interval recording D. Rate recording Answer B. Partial interval recording Measurement is the most valid and preferred type of data collection A. Permanent product B. Continuous. C. Discontinuous. D. Interval. Answer. B. Continuous. Recording the number of pieces of clothing a person folded is called A. Duration recording. 
B. Rate recording. C. Permanent product recording. D. Frequency count. Answer C. Permanent product recording. Paul starts a stopwatch when a behavior ends and stops the stopwatch when the next behavior begins. This is called underscore 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 underscore. A. Latency recording. B. Duration recording. C. Interresponse time, IRT, recording. D. Time sampling. Answer C. Interresponse time, IRT, recording. If a teacher checks a student's completed assignment to measure how many math problems the student has done correctly, this is an example of A. Duration recording. B. Rate recording. C. Permanent product recording. D. Interval recording. Answer. C. Permanent product recording.